Namaste Ashok and Nitu, this is Andrew. I've prepared a 20 minute video for you showing you how I'd like you to connect a GridX control to SQL Server using store procedures and classes that I provide. This is a standard method for a simple database connection. I hope you find the video helpful. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do or do differently to help you. Thanks a lot. So the purpose of this video is to explain how I'd like code tables, or lookup tables, uh, to be set up for the user. These are tables that would be used in list boxes, that kind of thing. They typically only contain one or two meaningful columns and they're used to connect to other tables and forms. So we want to create a form or forms that will be able to manage these lists and allow the user to add new entries, edit them, etc. So these will be very simple forms. They'll simply have a grid and the whole for the whole table will be displayed in the grid. Typically, I will make use of a number of grids within one of these forms all separated by tabs. I'm going to show you in a minute how to do a simple grid connected to one table. And I want to apply the same design standards to all. Before we start, let me just take, give an opportunity to explain how I'd like to lay out my projects. I do make use of uh, the assembly info um, to record build numbers and make notes and comments about the build. I also use folders within the project. These are the standard ones, classes, forms, later on there'll be reports. So please organize your code in the same way. Under here we have a number of classes at the moment. There are some standard ones which we'll talk about later such as error handler. The rest of these relate to specific tables. And when it comes to simple table management, I have a system that will automatically generate the stored procedures we need to insert, update, delete and create the correct class syntax for those and the commands to perform those operations are available as properties of those class. So to do what we're doing now is very simple for you to be able to set up a form that can write to and from a table in SQL. You don't have to worry about SQL at this stage. Um, the coding's all done for you really. So I'll show you that and it will be the same. If I give you six of these to do, it will be the same for each one. So it's so easy, it probably would have been quicker for me just to go ahead and do them. but. Uh, I want to try and make sure uh, you're trained up and able to help as much as possible. So the table we're going to do is this one. It has its own class file called code table rotation type. These classes I'll be supplying you as you need them. If you look in here you'll see it has private members and properties relating to each of the columns in the class. You can create an instance of the class, pass values to those members and use insert and update procedures which we will be using elsewhere in the project but for the grids and code tables we're interested in these shared functions which is a get all function which will retrieve everything in the table and is returned as a command and similarly an insert which is returned as a SQL command and update and the delete command and you'll see how we're going to use those uh, in a minute but you'll see all the syntax will be set up for you. You don't have to worry about any of this. It's already done. Now we also will in the project be using an MDI form, a multiple document interface. It's a container. It's a little old fashioned, but it's the way I prefer to work uh, where multiple forms are contained within the single parent form. And the user uses a button bar down the side, which enables them to call the forms they want. To see the various settings for this button bar, you right click and choose button bar designer. If you need to know what the buttons are, set icons and things like that. But this is already set up. We've got one called code tables. And clicking on that would open up the code table. And I'll just show you what happens if we go in there. It picks up the key, which determines which item the user has clicked. In this case, it was code tables. It will look for form code tables and it looks for a property called an instance count, which I'll tell you about in a minute. If that's zero, it means the form isn't already open and it creates a new instance. If it's not zero, then it looks at the children 
of the MDI form finds the one we're looking for and activates it. So it means by clicking on this button bar, if the user's already got a form open but it's covered by another, they can easily switch back to it using the button bar. So let's look at the form itself then. This is it in design mode. There's a single tab at the moment, which is a Janus add-in form. And we get to the tab pages using this, and I'm actually going to call it uh, rotation type. So we'll just change the name of the tab here. There are other tabs as well. The idea is that we will be able to control a number of code tables within this form. But I'm just going to show you one today. Now this blank box here is actually a grid X control. We can do the design at design time, but I found with experience this is a real problem. Because if you have to reset the design because the table's changed, you lose all your work in designing it before. So please never lay out one of these at design time using the design control. We'll always do it in code. And I'll show you how to do that. There are a lot of design properties of this I've set. For example, there's a visual style which should be set to Office 2007. I set other key properties such as uh, the grid lines is solid and there are alternating colours and I set the alternating back colour to light steel blue, the fonts etc. There's quite a bit to set up so what I suggest is you simply do this when you're setting up a new grid copy one I've already done and paste it and give it the name of your new table. We'll always use grid X as the prefix. Okay so let's go back to our rotation type then and look at the actual code behind this form. On all forms we should put option strict and option explicit on. There may be extreme circumstances when we need to turn it off on a form but by default we should put it on each form. And we can import system data, SQL client, OLADB, there may be other imports you need as well but for these purposes this should be sufficient. I like to lay out my forms in regions which I give these names on every form event handlers, general procedures and members. The event handlers contains all the procedures that have a handles after them so they handle form events and control events so these would all go in event handlers any other procedure or function would go in general procedures and then the members would contain shared properties, functions variables, not functions rather, but variables and properties belonging to the form. This is an important one, is the shared instance count. And this is what we used on the MDI form to determine is this form already open or not. And it's set to zero, you should put this on all forms. And it's important as well that the form load and the form close event set this either plus one or minus one. Then we also have a property boolean value here which is a flag grid x rotation layout type set which is false. We'll come to how we use that in a minute. Then the first routine we'd call when the form's loaded is set up data adapters. And we can put the setup code for all data adapters in here. For each table that we're controlling on the form there should be a twin pair of a data adapter, SQL data adapter and a SQL data table. As we add other tables to this form we'll add additional ones of these. It's very easy to get these reading and writing from SQL with the methods I've set up. For each data adapter we have the class files that I showed you here. So this is the class I showed you earlier, rotation type. This has four shared values, four shared uh, functions which each return a SQL command. So we'd set the data adapter select command to the SP get all and the specific name of the table in there. That will retrieve all the rows in that table. Then we also have an insert command, an update command and a delete command. These are even easier because they're named the same for all tables. So to set up the next data adapter for a different table you just change the data adapter name, you change the class name 
and you'd have to change the Skeletor name, everything else is the same. 